Okay. Good morning, church. Welcome to uh, Watana English Service in this morning. And Christmas is coming. And are you happy with this? That it, Christmas is coming. And so today we're gonna sing a Christmas song. But I hope that it will not be like just only Christmas song, but gonna be the worship song, gonna be song that help you get close to God and help you remind you of like the birth of the Jesus and the reason of the Christmas. So let's sing the first song, O Come All Ye Faithful. I like this song, like the word that say, O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Adore is mean like to love someone deeply and ultimately. So today, let's come and adore our God, adore our Jesus. So shall we all stand together and sing praise to God. which is very beautiful song. It's like, tell us the story of the birth of Jesus. So let's sing this song together.
It's a very beautiful song. And actually, this song, O Holy Night, it is from French poem. The, the word that we are singing, like we just recently sang it, is not the original, but it's the original word is from the poem, which I'm going to read you some part, like the end of the part of the poem, which is very beautiful and powerful. So you can think. Okay, let me read it for you. It said, The Redeemer has broken every bounds. The earth is free and heaven is opened. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. Love unites those that iron has changed, who will tell him of our gratitude. It's for all of us that he is born, that he suffers and dies. People, stand up, sing of all your deliverance. Christmas, Christmas, sing of the Redeemer. So, I think this poem is really nice that reminds us that God sent his only son to die for us. And that's the reason of the Christmas that we celebrate. Give thanks to God for the freedom that we receive. God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His soul is God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, whosoever believes will not perish, they shall have. Eternal life I shall hold To the cross I shall hold To God alone For His love For His love Has salvaged me for His love has set me free. For God so love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. Whosoever, whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life I shall wait I shall wait 
upon the Lord I shall wait upon His word by His grace I am released by His grace I am pretty for God's love for God so loved the world that he gave his only son whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life for God for God so loved the world that he gave that he gave his holy son whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life for the blood of Christ we are we set free that is our sin are forgiven and how great is the grace of God which he gave to us in such last measure in all his wisdom and insight so Thank God for His salvation. By His precious blood, I have been set free for the glory of Jesus' name. I surrender. I surrender all now to Christ alone. In Jesus I am saved. Sing one more time. By His precious blood, I have been set free for the glory of Jesus' name. I surrender all now to Christ alone. In Jesus I am saved. For God so loved the world that He gave His soul. Whosoever believes will not perish, they shall have eternal life. They shall have, they shall have eternal life. Let's pray. Thank God. Thank God for the son that she sent to die for us, that he suffered and died for us in this Christmas time, that we're going to remind of the freedom that you give us. God, we thank you for all things, and let this be the Christmas that we're going to give all the love that we receive from you to other people. We pray all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's such a beautiful Sunday, do you think so? We come to church with different reasons. I think we all have our own uh, reasons to come to church. We come to thank God, we come to praise God. We come because we want to tell God that we love Him. And now, just now, we come because we adore Him. 
So uh, let us all uh, feel the love and let us adore him for the whole spirit of uh, Christmas. A call to worship. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestor. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. From Daniel chapter 2, verse 23, we will have our uh, prayer of confession. morning. As we come to our time of prayer, I want to just point out that today's service will be a little different, and the next two weeks after this as well, we will sing four hymns during the service. Normally we sing two, um, so we are beginning to sing the joyful hymns of Christmas, even though Christmas is not yet here. So between the time of the assurance of pardon and the pastoral prayer, we will begin and sing our first hymn together. Um, also, some of our faithful members have been working to help plan the road to Bethlehem, which is our Christmas Eve celebration here at Watanad Church, where all three of the congregations will join together that evening. And um, in preparation for that, some videos have been made asking people what Bethlehem means to them, people in this congregation. Today we're going to be watching two of them. So uh, the time of announcements will be a little longer than usual at the end of the service. So let us turn to these words from the letter of James, the fifth chapter, verses seven through 10. He writes, Therefore, brothers and sisters, you must be patient as you wait for the coming of the Lord. Consider the farmer who waits patiently for the coming of rain in the fall and spring, looking forward to the precious fruit of the earth. You also must Wait patiently, strengthening your resolve, because the coming of the Lord is near. Don't complain about each other, brothers and sisters, so that you won't be judged. Look, the judge is standing at the door. Let us take a few moments in silence to confess to God what is in our hearts, whether we are asking for forgiveness, giving thanks, crying out for the pain of this world or of someone we love very much. A moment of silence together. Listen to these words from the prophet Isaiah in his 35th chapter, the third and fourth verses. Strengthen the weak hands and support the unsteady knees. Say to those who are panicking, be strong. Don't fear. Here's your God coming with vengeance. With divine retribution, God will come to save you. Let us sing together, there's a song in the air.
Let us continue in an attitude of prayer. Today, we pray for two things, O oh God. We pray for joy, and we pray for courage. We do not know which one should come first. But when we look at your people in the biblical story, they have both joy and courage, even in the hardest of times and the most stressful of events. We pray for the courage and the joy of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and of Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. They did not know all of what was to come, but they believed in you and in your promise. Prepare our hearts and souls, O God, in this holy time to receive Christ our Lord coming into the world at Christmas. Christ came into the world to do good to all. Let us be watchful and do no hurt to others. Let us not gossip or be demanding or cause them to stumble or to lose faith or to speak in any way to damage others. Let us be filled with your courage and your joy, never forgetting any who suffer in this world. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may prepare to meet our Redeemer. And as our Lord taught us, so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated.
Today, I am reading from the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter, beginning with 39, verse 39. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary said, with all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy, just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham, and to Abraham's descendants forever. The year was 1914. This is 105 years ago. It was the Western Front in the First World War. And these are the words of a history writer about something that happened at that time. This writer says, German troops began decorating the area around their trenches in the region of Ypres, Belgium. The Germans began by placing candles on their trenches and on Christmas trees, then continued the celebration by singing Christmas carols. The British responded by singing carols of their own. The two sides continued by shouting Christmas greetings to each other. Soon thereafter, there were excursions across the no man's land where small gifts were exchanged, such as food, tobacco, and alcohol, and souvenirs, such as buttons and hats. The artillery in the region fell silent that night. This truce, this short peace, allowed a breathing spell where recently fallen soldiers could be brought back behind their lines to be buried. Joint funeral services were held this fraternization, this friendliness with the enemy 
was not without some risk. Some soldiers were shot by forces on the other side. But it happened in more than one place. And in many places, this truce, this peace, lasted through Christmas night. But in other places, it continued until New Year's Day. And once again, the following year, on Christmas Eve, 1915, 104 years ago, a peace overture came from the German lines. On Christmas Day, after a night of carol singing, Bertie Felstead, who was a private in the Royal Welsh Fusiliers, in other words, a British soldier, Bertie Felstead recalled that feelings of goodwill had so swelled up that at dawn, Bavarian, that is Southern German, and British soldiers climbed out of their trenches. Somebody produced a football from somewhere, a soccer ball for you Westerners, you Americans. Nobody could remember where this football came from. It wasn't a game as such, more a kick around and a free for all, he said. This is Bertie Felstead. There could have been 50 on each side for all I know. I played because I really liked football. I don't know how long it lasted, probably half an hour. When Bertie Felstead died, the year was 2001 and it was in July. He was 106 years old. And it was thought by many that he was the final survivor of that day, the truce on that day. But later, it was learned that a man named Alfred Anderson was still living. He was a Scot, and he died a few years later in New Tile, Scotland at the age of 109. These stories are true. This is not the kind of courage that we hear about so often from people who write history. They talk about the brave ones who go out to fight. Not very often do they talk about the brave ones who go out to be at peace together to bring healing, even if it seems so small and so short. After those two Christmases, the higher officers cracked down and said, you cannot be friendly with the enemy. We are supposed to kill them. And we did not hear these stories in World War I anymore. It was Christmas time. Soldiers were tired of fighting, and they realized that those people over there were human beings. They decided to make friends instead. Sometimes I wonder, does it take more courage? Does it take more bravery to live at peace or to be at war? Today's scripture lesson tells of two women who were very brave, very courageous. One was too old to become a mother. The other one, not even married yet. And yet they placed their lives in God's hands. And they believed that what they were hearing was truly from God. The messages that they believed were coming to them. They believed these were from God. They believed in a God of joy, a God of peace, a God of hope, a God of healing. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've looked into someone's eyes and just 
you just knew that they understood. They knew what it was like, what it is like for you. They knew what you've been through. Imagine Mary and Elizabeth meeting together that day. The mother of Jesus and the mother of John the Baptist. Imagine that they looked into each other's eyes and saw this understanding. If they were actually cousins, they must have known each other. But you and I know that being related to someone does not guarantee that you will understand each other. And here they were, these two women, both pregnant, unexpectedly, which is, um, any of you who have had children know that that can happen. Both in a strange position, both probably afraid. Anyone who has ever had children or tried to have children must be brave. The whole world over. Suddenly, there was someone who understood. I wonder if each of these two women said to herself, oh, I have been so tired of trying to explain myself and this situation, and here is someone who needs no explanation at all. She just knows. And somehow, in this prophetic statement that Mary made, which is known as the Magnificat, because in the Latin, it begins with, O oh, magnify the Lord with me. These verses that she spoke in Luke and probably sang, it was known as a song. Somehow, she received these powerful words from God as to what this child would mean. Yes, we know from the gospel story that there came a time when she was not completely sure about who Jesus was. But in that holy moment, and in most of the moments of her life, in that holy moment with Elizabeth, Mary spoke some of the most prophetic words ever spoken. God raises up those who have been forgotten, the little ones, the ones with no power, no importance, no rank. We who say that we follow Jesus, the son of Mary, fail at this too often. We are not kind to the little ones. We do not raise up the ones with no power, no importance, no rank. It takes courage to do as Jesus did, to do as Mary did, even to do as Elizabeth did. It takes bravery. But I like this word, courage. Our friend Kung Pui Fai said that uh, O Holy Night comes from a French poem. The word courage comes from a French word. It means heart, courage. And on this Sunday, which is named Joy Sunday in so many churches around the world, and on this Sunday when churches in Thailand remember the shepherds who were lowly and humble, and not considered important in their society. Let us take into our hearts the words of Elizabeth. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises.
Christmas is a time for giving. So let us continue to do our love and our giving all the time. Do not store up your, yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Oh Lord, just as we have made a clean space in our pockets by taking out some money and giving it to your work, make a clean space in our minds, we pray. Let us not worry for ourselves or for those we love. Let us not trust in what we might have or what we hope to have in this world. Instead, let us put ourselves completely into your hands, just as Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, did, just as Mary, the mother of Jesus, did. We pray with thanksgiving in Christ's name. Amen.
please be seated for a moment. This is a time when we like to welcome any who perhaps have not been here before. If this is the first time that you are worshiping with this congregation, we ask that you would stand so that we could welcome you. And uh, also, if you have not received a visitor's card to fill out, uh, the ushers will make sure that you get one. Anyone here for the first time? <laughs> Welcome. Well, oh, very brave. We talked about brave, <laughs> courageous. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. We want to remind everyone that uh, there is a time for coffee together in Mana Hall, which is the building back behind the worship sanctuary um, after this service from 10 to 10.30. And then we have two Bible classes. One is uh, by Achan Wurchihan Zinghai, and that one is about the book of Ecclesiastes. And then my class, which is Introduction to the Christian Faith. And you are welcome to attend those from 10.30 to 11.45, after which there is lunch for everyone. And you are welcome. We want to make sure that everyone knows, and in a minute we're going to see these videos, on the 24th of December, which is next week, Christmas Eve, we will have uh, an evening celebration together. The theme is the road to Bethlehem, and we will even have people dressed in the old ways. There will be a journey to Bethlehem. There will be games. There will be songs. There will be a, a dinner for everyone. You are welcome. And there will be a time of worship together. And this begins at 5 in the afternoon, and it goes until about 9 p.m., so uh, please do come, invite your friends to join us. The Thai and, con Thai and English congregations will be together that evening. And now let us take a moment before our final hymn to watch these videos of the road to Bethlehem. Scripture, music, these are things that have helped me find my way. Well, yes, the, the one thing that connects me to God is when I read the Word of God, like when I read the Bible every day, I mean, that makes me be very close to God. Because you know? sometimes when I forget to read the Bible, that's when I forget God. I mean, it's not like I forget him, but the more I read the word, I mean, the, the more closer I get with him. You know? Yeah, prayer as well. ที่ที่เราได้สัมผัสมาเนี่ยฟังเสียงพระเจ้าเราเป็นอาจจะช่วยด้วยการเราจะเข้าไปใจออกแล้วหลับตาเพื่อที่จะเงียบสงบจริง
ไม่มีไม่ถึงไม่ออกไม่ยอมออกไม่ยอมออกมีมีบ่อยๆก็เหมือนว่ากราฟคนเราที่เพิ่งลองลองเนาะมีอยู่แล้วอ่ะมีบ้างนะคะแต่ก็ก็ไม่นานนิดเดียวค่ะอาจจะมีเหตุการณ์ไรที่ทำให้เราเสียใจแต่เราผิดหวังแต่ว่าถ้าเราคิดได้มากเรามีพระเจ้าเคียงเราแล้วก็คิดคุยกับพระองค์แล้วคุยอย่างกับเตือนเตียงค่ะวันทุกวันเลยค่ะแต่พระเจ้าก็ตอบกลับมาเรื่อยๆเพราะว่าบางทีเราก็มีบาปที่ติดตัวนะแล้วก็พยายามที่บางทีเราก็ออกนอกนอกทางไปบ้างเยอะมากเลยหลายประการที่รู้สึกว่าน้ำในชีวิตมันเริ่มแห้งแล้วเราเริ่มมีความอดทนน้อยกับคนอื่นพระเจ้าก็จะเราก็จะรู้ตัวเองว่าเราจะต้องกลับมานะนะเราจะเป็นอย่างนี้ไม่ได้นะเราต้องสู่ทางพระเจ้าเพื่อที่จะเติดน้ำโอ้โหบ่อยมากครับเพราะว่าเราไม่ได้ฝนเข้มแข็งแม้เราก็มีช่วงที่เราจะหลงทางแล้วมันก็จะรู้นะว่าจะเอาอะไรที่มาดึงใครกับใครมันจะรู้ว่าคนที่มีจุดอ่อนเรื่องไหนมันก็จะพยายามใช้นะครับก็แต่ขอบคุณพระเจ้าทุกๆครั้งพระเจ้าใช้วิธีเรียกไปใช้งานเรียกไปทำงานนะครับเราใช้พระเจ้าก็ทําให้เราเองอย่างวนเวียนอยู่ในการเราใช้มีช่วงผมมีประสบการณ์ตรงนั้นอยู่แล้วนะแต่ถ้าเล่าเป็นเรื่องยาวก็เป็นเพราะว่าเราเอาตัวเองเข้าว่าตอนนั้นสมัยผมหลงไปทางหัวเจ้าเลยนะแล้วกลับมาได้ยังไงคะตอนนั้นกลับมาก็คือเป็นเรื่องมันยาวนะก็เหมือนพระเจ้าให้โอกาสเกิดเกิดข้อมูลไหมผมนี้หลงไปติดยาเสพติดนะแต่พระเจ้าให้โอกาสกลับมาได้รับการบำบัดที่เป็นของคริสเตียนเนี่ยอยู่ได้ด้วยการอธิษฐานคือของคนที่อยู่กับกองการมัสการคนที่อยู่กับกองทำให้เราสามารถผ่านคนนั้นได้จะมีสายเรียนทั้งทีก็เป็นผู้สอนเราจะไปกินกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกันกัน
say that uh, John Pong, who was the last one who spoke in the last video, will be fully ordained as a Sasanat John, uh, a minister of God, this next Sunday morning in the Thai service. So those who are able to be part of that will be able to rejoice with him in that way. In, in the Church of Christ in Thailand, it takes a while to become fully ordained. You may serve God in a church setting or other ministry setting for many, many years before that happens. So we give thanks to God. And go now with joy and with courage, and may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.